Welcome to Care Simplified channel. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button as well for me. Um, today we are going to look at the pet phase three guideline. What is expected from you regarding the pet phase three? What you need to do now? The structure of the pet phase three. Remember, the pet phase three is in two forms: the report and then the HTML. That is the website. So now we are going to look at pet phase three, the report guideline. What do you have to do regarding the report? The first thing is to have your cover page, and then your cover page is same as the phase one cover page. You need to include your name, your school name. So it's better you copy your phase one cover page, and then you take it to phase three, and then indicate your name, your same name, the school name, the pet topic, if possible, the focus question as well. Um, the difference between the phase three cover page and phase one is that phase three, you have to include an abstract. So when you talk about abstract, is that written? Um, it's always written after the report is what complete. We will take a look at example of abstract. So now the abstract is a brief summary of the report, and it highlights the purpose or the aim, or uh, the reason why you are doing the investigation your main findings, and then your conclusion. So abstract basically combines these three aspects, your reason, your main findings or key findings, and then also conclusions. So you can say key findings. Right, so after the abstract, the next thing will be the introduction. Then the introduction as a heading, you can use heading one style. You know, when you go to the styles, you select heading one. Right. And then under the um, introduction, you have to talk about the overview of the pet phase three. Also use the heading two. So the main heading is heading one. And then the, this one overview of the pet phase three will be heading two. Now, what do you have to write under the overview of the pet phase three? You have to describe what the problem is. Why did you conduct the investigation or why did you investigate that? You have to also state the purpose of the investigation and mention the focus area. So here you must note, we use the past tense and the reported speech. This session can be adapted or copied from phase one task definition. So your phase one task definition, you take it to phase three under the heading introduction. But in this situation, you only make sure that it is now in the past tense, not in the present tense, like in phase one. Remember phase one, you were talking about, I will create this, I will do that. But here you have finished creating, you are writing a report. So it should be in reported speech. And then the second aspect will be, or the second heading one will be literature review or discussion. Now, when you talk about the literature review, we mean, Phase one, your research questions. First of all, you have to define um, some aspect, the importance of your topic, some definitions, let's say key definitions, you can put them there. And then as well as the summarized research based on your 10 research questions. So your 10 research questions that you did in phase one, you have to bring them under the literature review. So you have to organize the content in categories or headings such as, let's say your first heading is background information. So all the questions under background information that you created, and then you summarize the um, answers to that question, you bring them under background. Then you move to the benefit, let's say the good side of AI on your chosen sector, and then you put the information that you got from phase one as well. Also, bad or ethical use of AI, you put it there, and then the proposed solution. Don't forget, these headings can be derived from your phase one. When you created your phase one table, you stated the categories. So these are the categories, and then you bring the questions there as well. Now, use citation after every paragraph. 
So let's say your first question, you are done. You put the citation there as well. Why do we put the citation? Because you did not, um, it's not from you. You got it from literature. So you have to acknowledge the source of your information. After that, then you go to finding, or you can say key finding. Now for the key findings, we have different aspects. This will be the summary. So this is where you take the information, that table. So what you need to do here, first of all, you must bring the table and then you put them there. So the first table over here, you copy it from your summary and then you put them under the finding. Right. So you put them under the findings. And then again, you bring the information, you group the data by the same categories as your literature. So here, you did that one, the table, you just put them there. Then you have to interpret the finding by comparing with the literature. So here, I think we have done a lot of interpretation. So when you bring this table, here, you have done that part. That's why I told you in phase two that you must do the summary and then um, you'll be able to just copy that one and then you paste it here under the finding. Then you discuss what the, your results imply, which we did it in the table. So basically, the, under the findings, you just copy your summary of phase two findings table and then you put it here. Then you move straight to the conclusion. This is where you summarize your key findings by adding the information from the literature with the information from the, um, the table, the summary of your chart and then your graphs. Then you give recommendation for action or future work. And then the references, because you have cited a citation, then you have the references. Then appendices, you will be you have to copy your questionnaire that you created in Word. If you did some interview, you must just put your interview script transcripts as well and other supporting documents, you put it there. Then you must also put your declaration of authenticity. That um that file you must copy or you can create it and then you declare it as well. Note. You must insert page numbers. You must add captions for all images and tables. You must insert table of figures. You must insert table of content. And again, you can also insert um, continuous page break after every section. So if possible, when you are done with, let's say your section here, you are done with your literature, you can separate the literature from the introduction or your findings from the literature by inserting um, continuous page break, which is the section break. And then if you like, you can put the heading there in the header or the footer, which I will show you how to do that. Right, this one will give you some marks. So you need to take note of that. Right. So basically, this is the structure of the phase three guideline. Then I'm going to show you example here. Um, so this is PET phase three sample, which I'm going to show you as well, so that it will guide you. And remember, this document will be shared also to you. Right, you have your topic, you have um, your cover page, the ethical use of AI in the education sector, grade 12, CAT phase three, you put your name there, everything. Then you are done with your cover page. Then the abstract, like I said, the abstract should be summary. You talk about what um, the investigation is about. So this report investigates the ethical use of AI in education sector. So you must state um, what the topic is the purpose of this investigation was so you still here i did not use a so you copy from phase one so the purpose was to explore or to determine how ai is used to enhance 
learning and administration while ensuring ethical consent. So you discuss the purpose you, you get from phase one. Key findings reveal that AI offers personalized learning and administrative efficiency. It also poses some risks related to student data security and job displacement. These key findings, you'll get it from your conclusion. So your key findings and then the conclusion, you put them together. The report concludes by recommending clear policy guidelines, ethical training, and secure AI system in education. So this one, anybody who reads this part will know what your research is all about. Then after that, you go to introduction. The introduction, like I said, the investigation focus on AI use in education. Then you state your purpose to check both the benefit and the risk of using AI in the education sector. And then the research examine key aspects such as how AI support teaching, the concerns around the data privacy, and how educators feel about the AI system in classroom. So you write it in brief, like in a paragraph, don't write too much there, just in brief, by stating what the report is about or what your investigation is all about and some of the aspects that you investigated. Remember here, you will get it from your phase one under the focus of the investigation, but then you write it in the past tense. Then you go to your literature. You start with your first heading, background information. You don't necessarily have to type the question. You take the summary of, let's say, your first question that, that was categorized as background, and you put them there because you have already summarized, you copy and paste, and then you insert citation by going to references, manage source, and then you add the new source. So you, ma you must add the source. Let's say it is um, website. The author is Serenity. And then the month was April. And then the year was 2004. So you put them there. And then you can now insert a citation after the paragraph. So you go to references, insert citation, then you put it there. So basically, you put a citation at the end. Then when you are done taking all the, 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 the questions or the summary under the background information, then you go to the next category, which is two. Don't forget to make it heading two. Benefits of AI, you also copy the information, the summary, you put it there, and then citation. So you are going to do them one by one. So you are done with all your questions. Don't forget, you have 10 questions. So all the questions must be there. And then each of them, you don't forget to put the um, citation. And then remember, your test or your content should be maybe justified. You can justify it. And then the size should be 12 PT. And the area or calibre is fine. Right. Then you go to your findings. Like I said, the findings, under the findings, you are only going to paste that table that we, we got there. So you can copy the table, then you paste it here. The pie chart and everything. Just copy and paste with the analysis and then the interpretation. Now, when you are done, you go to conclusions. Like here, AI is positively influencing the learning experience, but raises ethical concerns that must be addressed. Schools should invest in secure, transparent AI tools and ensure that teachers are trained in ethical use. So this one, you can state about two or three recommendations and then your conclusion. You don't have to write too many. Some people you just copy and paste. No, you are summarizing your work, your findings. Remember your key findings will be there. Then you summarize it. After that, you put your references by going to bibliography. So you just go to references, bibliography. You can use APA style or any style that you want. 
and then bibliography. Then the moment you choose bibliography, it will list all your cited sources. Then appendices, you put your questionnaire, your interview and declaration. And then, like I said, you must have page numbers. You must have captions for all graphs and tables. Don't forget to put the graphs and tables also as well. And then table of figures and then the table of content as well. So the table of content will be here um, on the second page. You insert table of content after the cover page. You insert table of content before the introduction. So you go to table of content by going to references, table of content. You can choose existing ones if you have used proper heading one and heading two. Because here I have not applied any heading style, so there's no table of content. It should be there. It should, you must also have table of figures as well. So when you are done with all these, then you can submit your phase three report. Then you move straight to phase three website, which we will discuss in our next lesson. Thank you for your time.